Hey guys, you here, right? Hey, G, you know, welcome to the GTA 5 Top 10 episode. Today, I'm going to be showing you Top 10 Sports Cars. These are my favorite Top 10 Sports Cars. Of course, it's completely based on my opinions and my preference and my taste. Your list may look completely different. If that is the case, then let me know in the comments below what your list and order would look like. Of course, number 10 being your least preferred vehicle within the sports and number 1 being your most favorite and most preferred that you would choose all the time over every other sports cars. Of course... It is disappointing just to fit in top 10 because there is well over 15 sports cars within the category. But I try to get my personal favorites within the top 10 list. It was very difficult. I had to spend quite a bit of time thinking about it. Finally managed to get the list. Let's get right into it without wasting any further time. Coming to number 10 spot, we have the Grotti Carbonizze. Obviously, we know Grotti is the alternate name used for Ferrari from real life within the game. And of course, there's a couple of supercars made by the manufacturer of Grotti, the Turismo and the Cheetah, and of course the one for the sports, the Carbon and Say, as we show within this list. And the reason why I had to choose this for the top 10 list for my personal favorites, simply because of its design and how beautiful it looks, and also the fact that it's got this awesome unique feature with this convertible mechanism, solely based, of course, we all know from the Ferrari California. Now, it's got some features of the car based on the Aston Martin V12 Zagato as well. It's got, it's got elements, but obviously a couple cars mixed from real life in this, but obviously solely based mostly on the Ferrari as well. Of course, we know that. Here's another thing with this that I'm sure you guys probably will be interested. It's got a V8 engine, obviously, in the front based of the Ferrari 458 Italia, as well as the dual clutch transmission, possibly seven speed. If you look at how the gear works and the gear ratio, it's probably most likely seven speed. So here's the thing. You're probably thinking, why is this placing at number 10 spot if it's great the downside to this mainly is with the handling i mean hey the acceleration is pretty damn awesome as well as its top speed i suppose but the handling is not particularly great the turning circle available in this particular car is quite poor compared to the other sports cars available with its alternatives uh, to this particular car also the fact that it does have the tendency to oversteer quite a bit at high speed so that's something that you want to try to avoid but if you do execute and utilize this car properly then you will be able to compete in races but that is down to you how much you want to push yourself and how, how much you want to concentrate in races now in the number nine spot we have the benefactor Saron. i'm sure you guys know the benefactor is the alternate name using the game for the mercedes in real life but of course a lot of the cars in the game have a mixture of other cars as well but this one is particularly inspired by the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG with elements derived from the Jaguar F-Type as well as the Maserati Gran Turismo. The thing about this car that's absolutely amazing is it looks amazing, looks good, as well as the performance being up there as well with amazing top speed and acceleration. But the only downside is similar to the Carbon is there with the handling. The car feels way too big and rigid. Similar to the Alpha, I suppose you can say Alpha is slightly longer but it's got a similar sort of feel when taking corners to that car with the handling and turning circle available very similar to the alpha slightly better with the turning circle than the carbon is there because you slightly get a drifty feel which you can carry extra momentum and speed around the corner which is pretty cool but there's obviously better alternatives out there for handling than this particular car such as the cabrio i suppose that's a pretty damn awesome car with its turning circle available with that particular car so anyway serrano in is an awesome car looks fantastic a lot of customizable options great to make your own unique look bumpers carbon hoods even make a convertible as well for your preference so everything is there it's a beautiful general looking low car so that's one of the things i like about it and of course mercedes itself is a pretty damn awesome company so anyway sultan the korean sultan for the number eight spot obviously we can't forget about this car it was amazing on gta 4 you know, carrying on to GTA 5, still a great car, I feel. Obviously, GTA 4 version, I feel like, slightly better for comfortability and gameplay-wise, but still Sultan is there. A lot of customizable options, don't forget. You know, it's still viable in races to a certain extent compared to a few other sports cars, which is slightly better in lap time, so it's better than the Penumbra and the Shash the Fusilade with a ton of customizable options. You can even drift with this. It's a four-door you can free roam around with this at high speeds as well. Of course, the top speed is not that great, but the handling is there to compensate. The handling is absolutely amazing. Gives you the free will to mess around and have full control and predictability, which is something that you need to have fun, of course, and mess around with. You know, you can take this car uh, not too seriously compared to the others. It's a fun car to drive, generally speaking. It's an awesome car that we should respect from GTA 4. And that's why I wanted to put this in my top 10 list. As I said, this list was very, very difficult to choose because there were other cars that I wanted to put in this list. But 
I can only choose my top 10, man. If I could make it top 20, I would have, but there isn't 20 cars or 20 sports cars within the category. There was just about, it means close enough, but just not enough cars to do that. I was going to do top 15, but that wouldn't have made sense. It wouldn't have looked nice with the top 15, I suppose. But top 10s is fair enough, but it's extremely difficult to choose because there are cars like, well, I can't really say that because I sort of spoiled the video, but anyway, you get the point. <clears throat> so, number eight is the Kareem Sultan, great car. But coming at number seven spot, we have the Masacro. And it's interesting, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys do like this car, but I particularly, for my personal preference, would have, I actually you know, put this obviously lower in the ranks with the order. And that's because I don't really use this car, mainly due to the fact that the handling is a turn off for me. The general customization and the look of the car is amazing. That's the reason why I had to put this in this list. The look of the original car is absolutely amazing because it brings obviously the Aston Martin feel to it. It is the Aston Martin. And also the fact that then when you fully customize it, it looks completely different. Obviously the original look is there, but to a certain extent, but you just don't expect it, you know? A lot of customizable options and you can really make this car unique to how you want it to be with the options and the variety given for each category within the customizable options. And the fact that top speed is the best within the sports category, sorry, sort of puts the icing on the cake. But the only downside is the turning circle available in this car and the general handling is pretty, well, not for my standards and my personal preference. As I say, I personally would prefer cars that oversteer than understeer. And this car mainly understeers. But hey, it is what it is. If you're willing to sacrifice lower speed when taking a corner, by all means, use this car. But I personally like it for the looks. And a lot of these spoiler options obviously give a variety as well as to your taste and preferences. Obviously, sort of forced to put on a spoiler for races, but it doesn't matter what spoiler you put on. It still gives equivalent stat boost for all spoilers. So that's great. Now here's the thing about this car, this car only benefits on tracks that consist of a lot of straights or curvy straights such as Nürburgring, but that is it, you know, a lot of other tracks that has multiple corners, left, right, centre, over, you know, 90 degrees and shit like that, then this car will struggle because it struggles to maintain speed across corners, especially tight corners, but it is what it is, man, but number six spot, I'm sure you guys would agree with this, but I don't know, some of you probably have this higher up on your list. I wouldn't be surprised, you know. Number six, gotta be the Coquette. It looks fantastic before you even customize it. And then you have a bunch of these customizable options on top of that, which is the most I've ever seen in the majority of these cars in this game. Obviously, it's up there with the most. Obviously, there's a lot of other cars now compete it with these new DLC releases and whatnot. But <clears throat> at the same time, you could say a lot of variety given for this particular car and if you want to make a unique car then i would recommend using this obviously because you can have multiple coquettes that look different to each other just simply because of the parts available so that's pretty damn awesome and also the thing about this car is that in a racing environment you're gonna still compete it is viable but to a certain extent obviously the lack of top speed prevents you from getting that faster lap times but the general handling is there the turning circle is there traction downforce is perfect it's got a similar feel to a cheetah I suppose even though it's a pretty poor comparison to handling but it, it reminds me of that when I drive this for some reason even though it's slightly bigger and higher up than obviously the cheetah but the general handling when taking corners is amazing you get the flow around corners if that makes sense you get the momentum around corners with this car and the generally speaking the 90 degree turns also there the 90 degree turns are very very comfortable Basically, free roaming with this shit is absolutely amazing. It's so fun to drive with. The response on this is great. As I said, the turning circle was there. Weaving in and out of cars with this is amazing. You know, it really sort of tests yourself with your consistency and composure. It will be up there, and I'm sure you guys will take it will take you a long time before you crash with this car. That's what I'm saying. So at number five spot, we have the Obey 9F, not the Cabrio. But the normal 9F, see the thing about the Cabrio, it doesn't look particularly great for me. I didn't want to put it in this list. But the normal 9F looks absolutely beautiful when you fully customize it. But that drift though, god damn. Let me, see, let me see that beauty, let me see that beauty again right there. You see that? You see that? Shice the Fissilade ain't got nothing. Shizer, piece of sh Okay. Anyway, the point is, this car is brilliant. It's got one of the 
greatest turning circles available within the sports category. The thing about this car, it doesn't oversteer too much to the cabrio to the point where you can actually control it. Uh, it's not as tail happy as the cabrio. And because obviously this is hard top, and it's, um, it's one of those things where it's very, very easy to control if you actually utilize it properly. Obviously, if you push yourself, you will swing all over the place. Yes, this car does oversteer a lot if you don't understand the car. But if you do, then this car is great. You know, it can compete against the top sports cars within racing, but you ask, ask yourself a lot with this car. You really need to concentrate throughout the entire time. If you lack concentration on either one of these corners, you will spin out, I guarantee you. So it's one of those things, if you really want to test yourself and compete at this level, with other sports cars sort of have better obviously alternatives if you want to play it safe obviously in a competitive environment go ahead but then you can really benefit if you master the 089 f against other sports cars it is a great car really is with its turning circle if you take advantage of its turning circle you can take these corners really well and smoothly and prepare yourself for consecutive corners however you do get a tendency to drift like that and that is something that's really, really difficult to prevent. But it all is down to your skill and your driving preference and choice of which car you want to drive with and feel the most comfortable with. Of course, at number four sport, we can't forget about the Comet, man. Remember, this list, I'm not basing it solely on performance and handling and whatnot. I'm basing it on the beauty, um, the history behind it as well as where this particular car came from. We know it's from GTA 4 and GTA 4 this was the best car in the game so I'm giving props to that and respect to that and you can see from this beautiful footage here full speed weaving through in and out of these traffic with the help of its tail of course we had major problems not major problems but it, it did have the tendency to oversteer a lot more than I believe the 9F itself but that's really down to your preference I felt like I was getting a lot of tail happy tail swings with the Comet over the Cabrio and the 9F but I don't know if that's just me but yeah, this definitely gave me a lot of tail swings but at the end of the day this is one of the best cars for handling if you utilize it properly but then again one can simply say it's one of the worst as well so it's really down to your preference but if you're if you get used to this you can really benefit from it and you have amazing you have an amazing turn and circle with this car it's similar to the Cabrio and the 9F sorry and it's one of those things, as I say time and time again, when you utilize it, you can have a lot of fun with this car. And I felt like obviously the gameplay was much better with the car on GTA 4 than this game. They slightly made a few changes to it. I'm not sure why, but if they kept it exactly the same as GTA 4, it would have been awesome, but it is what it is. But hey, and the number three spot, we have the Jester, all right? Now the Jester is another beauty, and this came out of nowhere from the high life dlc and this obviously brings in a whole lot of new things to the table or well, handling i believe believe me the the perfect car for handling with balance with traction and downfalls this is the best within sports you're not going to spin out it's very predictable efficient in taking corners plus you've got a ton of customizable options in addition to that which then you can obviously make a unique build when tuning it up and you got this beautiful beast and of course addition to the spoiler which you're sort of forced to use for after the 1.14 patch you're going to benefit a lot around corners with this particular car when heck it was already great before the update where they made the spoilers useful this car is amazing all right best car for handling it's amazing for free roaming literally going at high speeds taking corners with ease response on the brakes are awesome as well and you can drift if you wanted to and you can also test yourself in oncoming traffic and perfect example of why the handling is amazing the response time turning circle on this car is absolutely amazing and this car can be used for a person that is beginning to race and really sort of be up there against other competitors if, and it's really really easy to get used to now obviously um you won't benefit from the top speed that's the only downside but I guess that's the element of balance that is required because if the top speed was really, really good on this car, then it will make it completely OP. But here's the thing though, because the car's got absolutely amazing handling around corners, it does lack the acceleration. So here's the thing, obviously when you think about it, when you utilize this car properly to its maximum potential, 
you obviously don't want to break too much around corners so you can carry on the momentum and speed hence you don't have to accelerate that much and you carry on that speed with that top speed you're going at so point is if you can use this car to its maximum potential and you can generally compete against the other cars that are quicker than this in the category and it is up there within the top five list as you've already seen for the sports uh, comparison within those lap times if you've seen the top 20 best cars sorry best car lap time video for that particular sort of series so anyway this is a really awesome car especially on a track that consists of a lot of corners however when it comes to a straight this car won't benefit as much compared to the other sports we've already spoken about but it's a really good car and it's a really nice looking car as well definitely in the top three list but but number two even though i've said a lot of shit about this car people and you know it's one of the it's not really a lot of shit i mean i love this car right I'm, i've got nothing against the car people i don't have any hate towards the gcr whatsoever right it's the fact that it's in the sports category which does not allow the other sports to be competitive with this what pisses me off because it's way too good it's too good it's not that I'm frustrated at the car being shit. I fucking love this car. It's the Elegy for goodness sake. It's the GTR. Of course people are going to love it. But the fact that you can compete easily against the supercar worries me. Yes, I understand the GTR in real life does that as well. But I don't know, man. I just don't know why it's like that in this game for the sports category. Yeah, why not? Why not? You know, I keep saying this. Why not change it to the super category? But that's just my opinion, guys. And I will stick to that. But I still love this car. It's got to be in the top two positioning, of course. The LG RH8. It's got amazing short gear ratios around corners, hence the amazing acceleration, which makes this car absolutely amazing in a racing environment, which does make it compete against the supercars, especially on a track consistent of corners, because it literally shoots off like a slingshot around these corners from gears two to four. Somewhere around there, gear, the gears just fucking kick in, obviously. Top speed does kick in kind of slowly, but general acceleration just literally shoots out like a calm shot. It literally, it's amazing. It's an amazing car for consecutive corners. It beats all the other sports cars with ease, with a few seconds ahead, man. So it's one of those things. I mean, as you've seen from the top 20 fastest lap cars, this was the third fastest out of all the cars in the game. So that is rather crazy. Definitely viable to compete. In the super category without a doubt and i wouldn't mind if it was moved to that category because there would be competition for this car because i want to see some competition you know i don't want to see dominance definitely competition so anyway number one spot my favorite car still gotta be the Feltzer. it's be, it was my favorite car in the previous episode many months back and i'm gonna stick to it my apologies with the chrome footage here didn't have much footage with the Feltzer, but it is what it is this is by far my favorite car in the game it's the benefactor mercedes felter uh, all right it's my number one car to choose in racing as well within sports even though i know the elegy is way too overpowered but it is what it is people don't know how to use the elegy even though it's one of the easiest cars to use you can beat the elegy with the felter because felter on the other hand does to a certain extent you need to have somewhat understanding with the handling because i have the tendencies to oversteer but now that should not be the case because you've got improvements to traction with the spoiler so when taking corners and whatnot you can take efficiently however on the other hand you, you could say when you're going at higher speeds hence the upgrade of uh what's it traction and downforce you can also spin out because of uh, improvements to top speed around corners and uh, sorry this momentum and speed around corners which you will drag and carry on so that is where sort of the extra seconds are gained from a good driver to a bad driver so with that being said with your skills of course if you push yourself with the felt so you can really benefit with the revs and track uh, sorry and the transmission because it works really well with the felt so compared to most of the other cars when accelerating especially when hitting against the wall or whatnot where the way sort of the mechanism works with the zentorno and the way the revs work on that is very similar to the felt but anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this top 10 let me know in the comments below what your top 10 would look like for your sports cars thanks for watching guys really appreciate if you guys left a like rating on this video and i'll see you guys soon check your son out good night peace yeah be sure to subscribe for more gta 5 content Hey guys, you here, right here, G, you know, welcome back to the original GTA 5 Top 5 Top 10 series where we're going to be pretty much revisiting all of the categories that we've covered many, many months ago 